to sing along, right? Well, blessed Memorial Day to each of you, and as we celebrate both Memorial Day and Ascension Day, we're going to kind of combine those two in our message today. As we celebrate the, the, the not only the, and remember the soldiers who laid down their lives for the freedoms of our country and to protect the freedoms of others, but especially to remember the greater sacrifice of our Savior Jesus, who, out of love for us, laid his life down. Uh, but we don't remember him in the same way we remember him, not as somebody who's dead and gone, but somebody who is with us each and every day because he rose again on that first Easter Sunday. So we welcome you to, to celebrate those two things in our national life and in our faith life uh, today. A warm welcome to all of you as we gather. We ask that you would, if you'd be so kind, fill out one of the shepherding forms that you're finding in your bulletin that greatly aids us in our shepherding here at at St. John's and uh, leave it in the basket in the back, especially as we have opportunity in this service to come to the Lord's table. Uh, as we worship, we'll be following the order of service that was in your bulletin. All the songs are printed in there and all the parts in bold are yours to speak uh, along with us. So uh, as we gather today, a reminder that today is the fifth Sunday, which means it's the, um, an opportunity to be able to support the food bank at St. Peter Emanuel. Uh, also, you'll see uh, that next week, some of you who have voices and would like to sing, um, there's an opportunity to sing with the uh, uh, choir of St. Paul's Crown Deer as they install their new uh, pastor. If you have somebody who's graduating from a training uh, school, uh, high school, college, that kind of thing, uh, we do have some forms in the back. We ask you to fill one of those out for the graduate, get into the office so that we can uh, lift them all up in prayer on June 12th. And a reminder that June 12th is a voters' assembly. It's our annual voters' assembly. Um, so we will be passing the budget uh, for the next fiscal year, starting July 1. Uh, we anticipate now calling a kindergarten teacher uh, to replace a teacher who is leaving uh, uh, to get married, actually. So uh, we'll. Uh, do that on the 12th. It's also uh, an opportunity for us to catch up with our leadership about uh, what's been going on, what we foresee happening, and you'll get an update on the pastoral transition uh, uh, call process. So that's all coming up on June 12th. We'll be right after church um, here in the sanctuary. Well, let's uh, uh, join our hearts and voices uh, today to give praise to our risen Lord as we uh, begin with an ascension hymn, a hymn of glory. Let us sing the first three stanzas.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We're gathered uh, as we celebrate the love and life of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now trusting in his promise, presence, and mercy, let's confess our sins to our good and gracious God. Lord of heaven and earth, I humbly confess my sin to you and to my sisters and brothers in Christ. I have now always set my heart on things above, where you are seated in glory. I have missed opportunities to be your witness in my world. I am sorry for my sin and beg for your forgiveness. Purify my heart and make my will like yours, using the time and gifts you have given me to be a faithful witness to my trust in you. Amen. Our Heavenly Father sent the Christ to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, so that repentance and forgiveness of sins might be preached in his name to all nations. Now as a called and ordained servant of the word, in proclaiming his grace, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Jesus, King of glory, you ascended in triumph to heaven. You left me here to be your disciple maker. Filled with your spirit, give me the courage to go out and make disciples bringing your gracious life to others in my world. Surround me with your love and care, along with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Jesus has been taken from you into heaven. 
will come back in the same way you've seen him go to heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is uh, from Paul's introductory uh, letter uh, to, or introduction to the letter to the Ephesians. In this one, it's interesting to note that when he speaks about the power that God gives to each and every one of us through his spirit, he compares it to the power of Christ's resurrection and ascension. From that power, he gives to work in us. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people, I've not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that's invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet, and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness, who fills everything in every way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to rise for the gospel preparation verse. about a centurion, it always talks about him in a positive way. 
Jesus met centurions. The apostle Paul baptized a centurion. And the centurion was the one who, when Jesus died, was the first one to say, this person, this man, was the Son of God. He's the Savior. Centurions could serve in the army and they could also serve God. And today we remember that we have soldiers who serve us in the Army and the Navy and the Air Force and the Marines, and they not only serve, um, serve our government, but they serve God by, by being good soldiers. You know, you and I are soldiers too. We have a general, his name is Jesus, and he's given us orders. He says, I want you to tell other people about me. That's our job our mission, and that's what we're going to talk a little bit more about in our uh, sermon today, about how we can be good soldiers for Jesus in carrying out his mission. So would you pray with me? And uh, would you pray with me as well? Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank you for coming, thank you for coming into, my world, into my world to win a battle for me. To win a battle for me. You died
gospel lesson today. Uh, let's uh, remember also, in, as we combine the idea of Memorial Day and, and Jesus' uh, mission together, we recognize that this weekend in cemeteries across our land, uh, taps are being played, uh, gun salutes are being carried out, flyovers happen at some of the events in uh, our land on this weekend as we remember men and women who served their country in war. And especially on this weekend, those whose last marching orders were heard as they were heading into battle that they never returned from. And it's good for us to remember them with thankfulness, to remember their dedication and to remember their sacrifice. When Jesus ascended, whether one turns to the last chapter of Matthew, the first chapter of Acts, or to this account in the Gospel of Luke, one hears of another army being sent into battle, another mission being assigned, another general giving his troops their marching orders. The Lord Jesus, now having risen from the dead, sends his disciples into the world on a mission. No order will be left unbreached. No boundaries left unpenetrated. No language will be left as a, or culture as a barrier to this mission mandate. That repentance and the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. And our text mentions Jesus lifting his hands in blessing. So how does he bless us in this mission. Well, we are sent by our risen and ascended Lord, and our hands, his hands bless us in two ways. First of all, as we are sent to be blessed by his hands, and then sent to be blessed as his hands. So by his hands, as his hands, as we look at our text today. You know, in every uh, war, you have somebody who sends soldiers into battle. And they're sent by the hands, the mouth, and the life of their commanding general. Um, so one of the things uh, that I always do is watch a little bit of uh, uh, kind of a military uh, portrayal of war every Memorial Day weekend. This one, I tend, I'm walking through one that's again the Band of Brothers which is the Airborne Division that uh, first landed in Normandy uh, behind enemy lines and, um, and progressed all, all the way to Berkstegard, which was Hitler's uh, enclave uh, right near Salzburg in Austria. And, and it tracks their movement throughout uh, the Second World War. Well, Dwight Eisenhower sent those soldiers in and and on June 6, 1944, um, they were preparing for that cross-channel assault. By May 1944, 2,876,000 troops were amassed in southern England, the largest armada in the history of the world, made up of more than 4,000 American, British, Canadian, and American, and and American uh, ships. More than 1,200 planes stood ready to drop those paratroopers behind <coughs> enemy lines and defend the troops that were being landed on the beaches of Normandy. And finally, uh, Eisenhower got the go-ahead uh, that the weather would break a little bit, and, and so he scribbled a note intended for release and then released a more official uh, order of the day for June 6th. And this is what it says. It says you're about to embark on the great crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms uh, on other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny, over the oppressed peoples of Europe and security for ourselves in a free world. 
your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well trained, well equipped, and battle hardened, and he'll fight savagely. But this is the year 1944. Much has happened since the Nazi triumphs of 40 and 41. The United Nations have indicted, inflicted upon the Germans great defeats in open battle, a man to man. Our air offensive has seriously reduced their strength in the air and their capacity to wage war on the ground. Our home fronts have given us overwhelming superiority in weapons and munitions of war and placed at our disposal great reserves of trained fighting men. The tide has turned. The free men of the world are marching together to victory. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck. And let us all beseech the Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. It's um, an incredible thing when you think about the sacrifice that that's, those soldiers went through. I, and I remember when I was pastor here many, many years ago, um, some of you might remember that Ed Ruprecht, Joe Ruprecht's dad came back um, to live in this area. He was originally from Iowa. But his health, he was in his, uh, had just turned about 90 at the time. And he was uh, uh, over at uh, Luther Manor. And I visited him uh, and because he became one of our shut-ins. And he was an interesting guy because uh, he was a colonel during World War II. And one of his jobs, he said, uh, he was stationed in England, was to be a part of the group that trained those paratroopers, people like the Band of Brothers, as they were going into combat. And he said one of the hardest things about being a commanding officer in that particular situation was sending people over and when they were dropped behind enemy lines, seeing their names, names of people you knew, names of people you would train, names of people who were your comrades in arms, their names showing up on either the KIA to killed in action or am I missing in action list. Because you knew that as you were sending those people into that battle, that some of them would never return. It was not an easy task. It was not done callously. And it was done with a, a great deal of, of pain. And, and people who have served in that kind of capacity understand the horror of having to send somebody into war, knowing what lies in store for them. All right, flip to your face. Think about what the father felt when he sent his son into war, to battle. For you and for me, the greatest of all uh, battles, the greatest of all defeats, needing to defeat death, to defeat Satan, to eradicate the power of sin, to destroy life in your life and in and mine. And, and we have uh, a great general, uh, but the difference with this general is you won't find a cross over his tomb. You won't find a wreath laid at his grave because his grave is empty. Because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And the picture of this warrior general at the very end of the book of Revelation is described in this way. I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider was called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He's a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. And he's dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses, dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He'll rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Jesus is a general who also has blessed us. Blessed us by his hands as 
As Dwight D. Eisenhower blessed his troops as they were going into war, Jesus blesses his disciples as he sends them now on their mission. But you and I know that this blessing could only happen because he defeated death and that he blessed them with his hands. His hands that have pierced through for their sins and for yours and mine. And now he prepares to send them out on the front lines in the mission into this world of carrying his name to others. He has supplied them with everything that they needed. He has blessed them with his training. And now it's time for them to be deployed. And it's that same Jesus that blesses us, blesses us also in the power and promise of his word, the word that was recorded by those that he had trained. There was a young couple with a little girl just brought a baby home from the hospital. Little girl wanted to be with her new baby brother alone all the time. It begged her parents that they just leave alone. She can take care of them. But they were reluctant because they had heard from other parents how sometimes older siblings can be a little jealous. And so um, they might even purposely hurt a newborn who they saw as treading on their territory. Well, finally, they allowed her to visit her brother alone, but they set up a, a monitor so that they could monitor the situation and intervene if they needed to. Well, the little girl went into the room, and the parents went to the inner room. And they heard her tiptoe up to the crib and say, tell me about God, I'm forgetting. <laughs> well, the first disciples wrote down what Jesus told them, so you and I would never forget. We would never forget the mission that he sent us on, nor his blessing that comes our way. His mission is to join him in walking and with our hands and our feet and partnering with him in carrying out the mission plan of reaching others with the love of Jesus. And every time our Jesus sends us out, he sends us out with his blessing. He blessed you in the waters of holy baptism when water and word were given to you. And he blesses you every time with his hands as he gives to you the very body broken, the blood shed to him encourage you in. And today's a day to remember that mission and to repent either individually or as a body of believers for the times when we've gotten off track. When we've forgotten the mission or stood in the way. To come back and be blessed by his hands with forgiveness and with peace and to be resent into this world. Sent now to be a blessing as his hand. You know, the reality is when White the Eisenhower sent that message, when they came up with their battle plan, when all the maps had been uh, written and drawn up and, and handed out and delivered to the various people who were going to hit the beaches and the ones who were responsible. By the way, I'm uh, just thinking a little bit about that. Another one of our members I got to know when I was here the first time, Kirk Ruitz, he was a cartographer. He was a map maker for the Army, specifically for General Patton's group. That was his job. But you know, a general can put all the best plans in place along with his uh, superior officers, and they can come up with a, a, a great plan. But once they engage the battle, they can't do much. They can't do much because they can't be on the ground making the decisions uh, right away. And that relies on the individuals. And the Band of Brothers, uh, when they first land in uh, Europe, they land in the wrong place. What's more, because of the way that they landed, they were dislocated from some of the other people in Easy Company. And eventually they had to kind of find each other. They had to figure out where they were and at least, I don't know whether it's true, but uh, when uh, they first landed uh, in, the, in the, the series, the radio operator loses his radio. So they can't even call anybody for help and say, help us find out where we are. 
and they have to make decisions on the fly. And, and if a, a superior officer gets killed, somebody's got to step in and take his place. In a real war, when a general sends his soldiers into battle, they are the general's hands, but he's got no control over them. They have to follow his direction, follow their training as they engage an enemy. It's no different than somebody being uh, uh, a coach of a team. On the way here in the Uline fields, uh, uh, over there, they're having some kind of frisbee. Um, it's, it's, it's like a frisbee tournament, but it's passing into each other, kind of like lacrosse. Um, you know, and they're running and throwing and running and throwing. But you know, the coach can prepare for them, they can drill them on everything, but once those players get on the field, the coach really can't do much. He can yell a few things, but he really can't make his players do what they want to do. When they're on the field, they are his hands if they follow his direction. And you and I are sent by Jesus into this world to be his hands. We're not only blessed by his hands, but we're blessed to be used by him as his hands in the places where he sent us. In the gospel lesson, oh, I'm sorry, in the, in the first lesson, where in uh, Acts, he describes this, uh, this going, this mission, he says, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, which is actually an outline of the book of Acts. The first seven chapters deal with uh, what's going on in Jerusalem, chapters 8 and 9, Judea and Samaria, and then crossing boundaries to the Gentiles in chapters 10 to 12, and the rest of the chapter moving further and further and further out from Jerusalem. And what we were saying to them is, you are becoming the very hands and feet and mouth of Jesus every place you go. And that begins in your Jerusalem, which is with uh, the people in your family, with your sons and daughters, your brothers and sisters, your husband and wife, to be Jesus to them. You've seen the poster Uncle Sam wants you? Well, you should see a poster that says Jesus wants you. He wants you to go on mission to, for him to engage the enemy of sin in your own life and in the lives of others, to fight on the front lines with what? With the message of repentance and the forgiveness of sins until it's preached to all nations. To think of it in another way, when your hands are used as Jesus' hands, are they hands that are like a barrier that say, stop, I'm sorry, I can't have anything to do with you, or are they Hands that say, come. When Jesus told his uh, parable of the wedding banquet, what did he say to his disciples? He said, go out into the highways and byways and compel them to come in. And that's how Jesus sends us, as his hands. Uh, St. Teresa is attributed to this, uh, but it's a wonderful summation, I think, of of uh, this message that you and I are blessed as the hands of Christ. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on this world, and yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes, you are his body. Christ has no body now on earth. Now, I want you to read this with me, but I want you to change pronouns. Okay? So we'll see how good you are. Uh, so where it says yours in the beginning, you need to say ours. Let's own it. Christ says no body now but ours. Except when it gets down to you are his body, we've got to use the collective we are his body. Okay? Can we try to do that? Would you read it with me? Christ has no body now but ours, no hands, no feet on earth but ours. Ours are the eyes through which he looks compassion on this world. Ours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Ours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Ours are the hands, ours are the feet, ours are the eyes. We are his body.
Christ has no body now on earth, but on us. Would you rise up and pray? Lord Jesus, on this Ascension Day, remind us that we have our marching orders, your mission to carry out in this world. And we ask that you empower us by the gospel, by your loving grace on the cross to daily repent of our own sins and then to love and serve in the way that you have first loved and served us. But the same kind of sacrifice as those we honor on this Memorial Day weekend who died for their country. Help us to lay our lives down daily on the front lines of the enemy's Babylon. Not for country, but for you, our risen Lord, our Christ. Amen. Now may that peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in your Jesus to life everlasting. <coughs> Let's confess our faith today. We'll use the exclamation to the third article related to the Holy Spirit uh, as our confession today, so let's confess together. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with its gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgets all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Uh, very often in Memorial Day kind of posters and pictures, this passage that Jesus spoke to his disciples uh, before he went to his death uh, is printed. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. I invite you to remain standing. One of the hymns that connects our faith with uh, soldier images is for all the saints. So to honor those uh, that we honor on this uh, national holiday, let's remain standing and sing these verses uh, for all the saints.
least of our lives to make disciples here and among the nations. Use them to reach out and share your love in Jesus with others. Amen. Risen and ascended Lord, for the gift of our bodies and the healing work they do every day, we give you thanks. Strengthen and heal hearts that are heavy and bodies that are weak, especially Don and Charlene, Genevieve and Joanne, along with all those we lift up before you in our hearts. Raise the hearts of our shut-ins by your loving grace each and every day. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Risen and ascended, Lord, thanks and praise to you for blessing Alan and Lori Doty through 42 years of marriage, and Daniel and Esther and Yang through 24 years of marriage. Fill all marriages full of thankfulness as we love, serve, and bless one another. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Risen and ascended, Lord, pour out your compassion and care on the hearts of those hurting because of the murders in our nation, especially this week in the school shootings in Texas. Grow in the hearts of all of our citizens such a deep love for their neighbor that it drives out murderous thoughts and actions. And pour out your peace through us, using us as your hands in our community through our own attitudes and actions. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Risen and ascended, Lord, strengthen our first responders as they deal with tragic sicknesses and results of violence in our neighborhoods. Through the faithful service of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines, especially Chrissy, Julia, Benjamin, and Christian, sustain hope and bring protection and safety to those they serve. Pour out your compassion on those who are still suffering the effects of war throughout our world, especially those in Ukraine, granting safety to refugees uh, and blessing for those who serve your will on the battlefield. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Risen and ascended, Lord, on this Memorial Day weekend, we give thanks for those who courageously laid down their lives for their friends and for the cause of freedom. May the example of their sacrifice inspire in us your selfless love and as our dying, uh, risen, and ascended Lord. Bless the families of our fallen troops and fill their homes and their lives with your comfort, strength, and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Risen and ascended Lord, open doors of opportunity to bring your grace and truth to our Jerusalem, our Glen Neck, River Fox, Bay Shore, Brown, Milwaukee community. Bless many through a place of refuge, SOS Center, and the St. Peter Emanuel Food Bank. Keep safe and growing in your word our young adults in college, the military, and the workplace, especially our college students as they complete finals and graduations and travel home or to new job locations. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Risen and ascended, Lord, make the members of each of our households your hands and feet in our world. We give thanks with Mark and Charlene Kerman for a successful back procedure this week for Charlene and the opportunity to safely visit Mark's family. Bring continued blessings and a growing marriage into the lives of Brett and Clara Kuyper. And we rejoice with Val and Karen Kuyper as they celebrate uh, Val's mother, uh, Gert Kuyper's 90th birthday. Grant safe travel to the family gathered now in Texas and continued fruitfulness in our uh, own church, school, and child care ministries. We join Tom Allison and Charlotte Benner in thankfulness for daily blessings. Continue to uh, use us as your hands and your feet, along with Bobby John, Elizabeth, and Jonathan Lemon, to follow your call to your mission. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, now remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after the supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is 
against my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. If I didn't see it.
Send us as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we might share your glory with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace and serve the risen Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Now go into a whole the world with peace and joy, ablaze in the Spirit and ready for service, trusting that this same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you've seen him go into heaven. So go in the confidence that the grace of this same Lord Jesus, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with you always. Amen. Amen.